You are here to experience the joys of canting. A cant is a particular form of armorial heraldry, typically, that uh, provides for convenient puns and goofy japes so that you can have secret little cute jokes in your heraldry that will help you last through the ages, no matter how poorly the state of uh, reading comprehension there is. Or you can be like a hippie and do it that way. What's that? Could I get that again? I will assume that was an accidental speech and I will continue on. All right, so what is canting? Um, the old joke is that heralds don't pun, they can't, aha. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. So canting is any kind of visual pun that relates back to the owner of the arms. It's not any visual pun. It's just ones that have to do with the meaning of the arms. Uh, you can do this just for fun because you're a big nerd. I know you are, don't lie. Um, it needs to be within some kind of rule of heraldry. If you're just doing it with like Victorian rules, cool. If you want to do it with SCA rules, great. If you want to do it with current modern British rules, awesome. But just putting pictures together wouldn't necessarily be canting. Um, and in history, canting is a way for um, people who necessar don't necessarily read to quickly be able to pick out who's who. Uh, you know that you know, Pete the uh, Booker is the one with a book on his shield. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a lot of the reason why cants were useful. Um, a cant is not particularly just symbols that have to do with yourself. Uh, sometimes uh, heralds will call this resume building when you're building a shield. It's like, I, I do spinning, so I'm going to put a, a, a spinning wheel on my shield. That's not a cant, that's just a symbol that indicates something that you do. Uh, canting tends not to be disrespectful and shouldn't be disrespectful. Um, now, there are some certain symbols that might be like, oh yes, this, this bar indicates that Jim is a bastard son instead of a legitimate son. Um, that's not quite what we're talking about, but you might have put, um, you know, a, a, a penis shaped thing to indicate that Bill here is a dick. <laughs> that would not be a good cant because it's just mean. Uh, like I said before, it probably shouldn't break the rules of heraldry because if you're going to do anything other than keep it in a small folder in your house forever and ever, you know, you want it to be something passable. Um, there are also lots of ways you can have fun and do jokes that aren't canting. You know, just having like funny, weird things, that's not particularly a cant. Um, even having visual puns like a, a fish beside a fire to be a fish fry because you like fish being fried. It's not particularly a cant. Um, some heralds enjoy making the most eye searing uh, heraldry they can. Um, I recently saw one that was, uh, I've never seen a similar thing except in a tie dyed t-shirt at a Grateful Dead concert, but it would pass. However, that doesn't make it a cant, it's just impressive. And canting is rarely obscene. You see the dick example a moment ago. So I want to bring you into one of my favorite passages of literature um, from the, the majestic world of the disc. Oh no, I don't know how to see my notes on this. Ah! Does anyone know how to see notes in the app? Uh, nope. On no the idea. phone app. Oh dear. 
When you just tap the screen, does it not come up with options that you can do? I think you'll end up seeing them. Oh. Then not no, that it's sorry. Bad. Oh no, we get to see your thoughts. Oh dear, well, all right. Let's see if you see them. Do you see them? Do you see my notes? I do not no. see your notes. Not yet. Did you just see the presentation? Mm -mm. Cool. I've learned a thing. All right. So some of you probably know about Terry Pratchett's Discworld series of fantasy novels. One novel in particular, Feet of Clay, uh, has an extended series of scenes with the heralds of the city. Um, and I would like to read you a short passage about canting in heraldry, summed up very nicely. Vimes glanced at three shields. Haven't I seen these before, he said. Ah, Mr. Arthur Carey, the candle maker, said Dragon, the herald. Suddenly business is booming and he feels he must be a gentleman, a shield bisected by a bend sinister dun mech un metal gris, that is to say, a steel gray shield indicating his personal determination and zeal, bisected by a wick, upper half the chandelier a fenetre avec ridou holon, a candle lighting a window with a warm glow, Lower half, two chandeliers illuminé, indicating the wretched man sells candles to rich and poor alike. Fortunately, his father was a harbor master, which allowed us to stretch ourselves a little with a crest of a lamp en poisson, a fish-shaped lamp, indicating both this and his son's current profession. The motto I left in the common modern tongue and his art brought forth the candle. You see, because his name is Carrie. Um, it was a bit naughty, but I couldn't resist it. My sides ache, said Vimes. This one is Mr. Gerhardt Sock, president of the Butcher's Guild, said the dragon. His wife's told him a, a coat of arms is the thing to have, and who are we to argue with the daughter of a tripe merchant? So we made him a shield of red for blood and blue and white stripes for a butcher's apron, bisecting bisected by a string of sausages, centralis a cleaver, held in a gloved hand, a boxing glove, which is the best we could do for sock. Motto is futuris meas est in viseris, which it translates as my future is in the entrails, both relating to his profession and alluding to the old practice of telling the future from entrails. While this one is for Rudolf Potts, the Baker's Guild. Uh, can you read it? And Vimes replies, uh, there's a rose, a flame, and a pot. Well, bakers use fire and the pots for water, I suppose. And the pun on the name, said Dragon. Well, unless he's called Rosie, I, oh, a rose is a flower. Oh, good grief, flower, fire, and water. A pot that looks like a gazunder, though, a chamber pot? The old word for baker was pister, said Dragon. Why, Commander, we shall make a herald of you yet. Thus ends the electric dramatic reading. Essentially, <laughs> though, what you'll see is that the herald is attempting to pack as much information in as possible and takes particular glee in canting with the names wherever possible. So let's look at some famous cants from history or the real world. Not everything here is period. We're gonna start with the period ones. So this one is from a family line called, and I'm gonna be bad with the romance languages and you'll just have to deal. So the family de Meta, which, um, features a male shirt um, on an azure background. The male would have been pronounced, I'm so sorry, Maiella, male in Italian, um, which has a passing resemblance to the name Maietta, if you squint. <laughs> 
Uh, very famously, the Metcalf clan um, was a, uh, is currently, this image is actually from their website. Um, they've been around forever and they came to prominence as uh, cattle farmers. So Metcalf etymologically derives from a phrase meaning cows for to be eating and killing. So their arms were originally um, three calves, plus or argent, three calves, passant, sable. Uh, you can look in the inset picture of the arms on probably stained glass, I believe, and you can see three figures that are definitely not dogs and are absolutely calves. And everyone can tell that, right? We're nodding our heads. We agree with this, right? <laughs> um, so, and there's a slight possibility that the reason it's three calves is that that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, really getting it in there. A lot of people are very familiar with this one, though now we are out of period. This is the crest for the Hancock family, as in John Hancock, as in the big, big name on the Declaration of Independence, Hancock. Uh, the, the image on the left is as the families were done up back in England, and the image on the right is John Hancock's gravestone, I believe. I didn't research extra hard to ensure the validity of this image, so I just think it's the gravestone, but I should have double checked. Um, in any case, the pun should be obvious. There's a hand, and there are three cocks at the top. Hand, cock. So, yay. Easy peasy. All right, so the College of Heralds in England still does active work. Um, and this one is from just a few years back, a comedian from The Goon Show, um, a famous pre-Monty Python uh, radio then television show. And Harry Seacombe was knighted for his work in performing arts. And so his arms are, uh, well, it should be pretty obvious that on his arms are merfolks, one of whom is a mer person combing her hair. So she's combing her hair in the sea. She's sea comb Harry. <laughs> yes, this is a this is a class in which I explain jokes to you. You signed on for this. All right, I think we're nearing the end of actual uh, real world examples, but this one is one of my very favorites. Um, this one is the badge for a Canadian ship vessel, um, the HMCS Discovery. Can anyone figure out why it is named as such? Or, or why the badge is, is designed like this? Can you translate it? Disc over Y. Almost. Or, yes, it's disc over Y. Does anybody know what the Y shape is? Oh. Isn't it uh, the um, the dowsing rod? It, it reminds me of the dowsing rod. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Basil Dragonstrike has uh, reminded me to point out that on the last slide, there's also the goon that is the motto of go on, either majestically or go on <laughs> jokingly all right so back to disc over y um the y is actually a heraldic charge called a shake fork that uh, is a is a pail which stops short of the edges of the shield and which has pointed ends and is probably related to a pitchfork in uh back in the day styling of images so yes, disc over Y is just freaking brilliant. All right, so what do Skadians do with this? So one of my dear friends is Lady Catherine Ambrose of Atlantia. 
Uh, this is her badge and her device, and both of them contain cats. The first is related to her mundane name. Her original last name is Lockhart, and so this is a heart inside of a lock. She's locked the heart. Uh, her device is a, involves a Catherine wheel to indicate that her name is Catherine. This one is pretty intense. Um, this is for Lady Mirren Ingen. Oh dear. I, I practiced this, but you can read it. All right. In any case, Mirren is sea white or sea foam or a fair sea. Um, and the, the Felchon is the, is wolf cub. So this is a wolf cub of the sea. And bits of the grammar actually relate to this as well. Um, and this one is very impressive because there are no charges. Um, this is just a field division. So the cant of, is, of course, it's a wall that's green. And his name is Greenwall. So the actual blazon for this piece of heraldry is Vert Mason Or. Very simple, very straightforward, easy to see, good quality heraldry. And I, and the last of the simple ones is uh, Rebecca Wielden Pike. Her, um, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be labeled badge. Her badge is an arm, presumably Rebecca, Wielden a Pike. Fish. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I thought it was wonderful. And lastly, the probably the best one in terms of heraldic language being used to create a cat. So this person's name is Millie. She's called Millie all the time. So obviously she's using a charge that's a mill. That's very clever. But the pattern is using heraldic language to turn it into Millie a repeated pattern of uh, whatever small image uh, will tend to be called that thing, E, usually doubling the consonant at the end. So you'll, I've here given you crucially and gouty. So with all of these mills repeated, it's milly. So that's kind of what we want to try and hit, that level of genius. <laughs> so, now we get to actually work on things together. Alrighty. So I want you, if you have the ability, to go to um, this website. Uh, and I should also double check and see how many of you are heralds in general, or at what stage of knowledge of heraldry do you think you are? I'm an intermediate herald out of Artemisia. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? I saw some shaken heads. I am oh, not a herald. Chatty chat. I'm a right. fairly accomplished herald, although more from the court side of things than the book side of things. Wonderful. That means that I'm not just telling you stuff you already know. Okay. I've been a herald for 40 something years and still learning. Oh no. Well, you can probably correct me on things. <laughs> All right, so once again, I'm going to ask what do you guys see? Do you see the presentation or do you see the website I just went to? I see the website you just went um, to. Okay. Book of Traceable Held the Cart. Excellent. All right. So there are several um, art resources for heralds, but this one is probably the easiest one to just search and see a lot of stuff quickly. So that's why I'm just selecting this for our exercise. But you, of course, are welcome to use any resources that you prefer, and I'll be happy to point you to those if you do not know them. All right, 
So let's pick one of these to try and create a cant for. All right, votes. Anybody got a preference? Gabe McFadden. What was that? Gates McFadden, I vote for Gates McFadden. Gates McFadden, okay, I got a vote for Gates McFadden. All right. So what do we know about the name Gates McFadden? Gates. You should have a gate somewhere in there. All right. So Gates, can you guys see this notepad I've got up? No. Yes, no. All right, well, I've, I've got a notepad up and I'm taking notes. I'll read it off to you as we go. So Gates McFadden, so we can have a gate, pretty good. Um, what do we know about the name McFadden? Scottish. Does anybody probably, have a clue? Them. You what? Say it's that a again. Isn't it a locative? Uh, actually, it's a patronymic. Mick is son of. Uh, Fadden mm -hmm. is um, little Patrick. So her her name is essentially Gates, child of little Patrick. So can you think of anything that might be indicative of Patrick? What's that? Clover. Oh. Clover and Shamrock. That would be good. Um, also, you can you don't have to have symbols. You can also do like the color green. Snakes. Snakes. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Too. Nice. What's that? Well, I was thinking of the snakes too. It was a nice little nod. So if Patrick is responsible for getting rid of snakes, you can also do things to snakes, like have them be cabossed. That means with its head removed. So. So what if, what if, let me see. Daily so field. We, we have doors. Well, that's just a bolt. Meh. <laughs> How about a portcullis? It's kind of like a gate, right? Yeah, yeah. And if we have a plural of the word gate, uh, we could probably do something that has three gates maybe in the chief. What you think? And then, oh. and then how about a cabossed snake on a green field? And it can be a bloody snake. Let's get really graphic. So how about a snake jewels, jewels being heraldic speak for red, on, on a pick a color uh, or a pick a pick a metal. Or silver? Okay, so argent. A serpent jewels or serpent cabossed jewels. So a beheaded snake covered in its own blood for for good solid Patrickness. Three gates in chief. Um, what color do you think her gates should be? Don't everybody speak at once. Why not make them green? Green's pretty good. Make them blue. I can barely hear some of you. Well, if the background is or, uh, is um, argent, then the chief should probably be a um, uh, color, and then the gates can be the metal. We can do that as well. Uh, a chief, however, doesn't have to have a, a backing color. You don't have to have that bar at the top. No, but it does help with some of the 
distinguishing marks. Sure. All right. So how about three gates, medal of choice, argent? Argent. Argent. In a chief green? Green. All right. So argent, a serpent, cabost, jewels, three gates argent in chief, vert. So awesome, awesome. How do you feel you did? I think you did great. <laughs> oh, hush you. <laughs> All right. Oop. Let's do another one together, yeah? Before you go on, there's a, a chat noticing something you should- Oh, um, where's my chat? I minimized it, and now it can't see it. Participants, more chat. It says Anna, uh, heads are combust, not Anna. Oh, well. Yeah, sorry about that, but I thought I'd point out the problem there. All you right. could have a snake's head instead of the snake. What is the word for headless? Is it just headless? Yeah. All right. It's just that I expect it to be blazoned. In any case, either variant would still be an entirely usable cat. So. Definitely. <laughs> so who wants to pick the next one? You, Bowie. You already picked one. Somebody else. Well, I second David Bowie. Well, all right. Hey. I'll third that. <laughs> I'm fourth. <laughs> I'm going to play this on hard mode. Okay. <laughs> all right. What do we want to do with David Bowie? We can we have like bows. Repeated. So bows. I like the, with the suffix. Bowie. I could do it like that Millie earlier. Wouldn't yeah. having multiple bows add the E at the end? <laughs> that would be cute. That would be a really, really fluffy looking coat of arms, but I don't see why not. Bowsy. <laughs> I don't know that it would be blazoned like that. I don't know that it has that capability. Well, we neither try it. Millie, really. Say that again? I said neither does Millie really either really. That's true. Really, why not? Well, it's just not a, a standardized word because you it's not a standardized background pattern essentially because it's a whole freaking mill. <clears throat> All right, what do we know for David? All right, I got some background people in here who are not actively in the chat, who are trying to remind you about your Bibble studies. Um, I was about to say a uh, slingshot. Say that again? A slingshot. A slingshot. That's good, that's good. Um, and- The star of David, six-pointed mullet. What's that? The I mean, star David. They said star of David. Six-pointed so mullet. A mullet? A six-pointed mullet? Might do something with the uh, patron saint of Wales, the Saint David. Saint to Wales, did you say? Patron saint of Wales. Patron saint of Wales? Is the, oh, the, the right, the place, not the animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could just use the whale as an image. Right. So, yes, that is actually one of the classic ones is using the whale to indicate whales. Leeks? 
I don't understand leaks. Leaks is commonly used, especially with Wales. The Prince of Wales uses it on all of his stuff. It's oh. the denoter of that, yeah. That's really cool. Oh, man. See, this is entirely outside of my knowledge. That's excellent. So just for clarification, when you guys are saying leeks, you mean the plant, right? Yes. Okay. L-E-E-K. All right. So, St. David, patron of Wales, associated with leeks. So we've got leeks, slingshots, mullets, and bows. <laughs> what do we want to do with all these? All of them. Everywhere. No. I, no. No. Too complicated. <laughs> well, I'm not the one doing it, so. You're in the class. Give it a serious <laughs> thought. Uh, could you slingshot the leak? You could very easily put leaks in chief and have a slingshot as a primary charge. You can get really complex with this, but let's stay at the basics level, just for my sanity. I am, I'm really on with the leaks. I think the leaks are good. I think that gets your, your David in very cleverly. And I'm actually, ooh, ooh. Somebody said we should do like, um, the, so bowsy, to have bows in the background. Let's see if there are any cute ways that bows, semi of wooden bows proper, a leak vert. I love it. Oh, I absolutely that. love it. How are leaks presented? Not very fine in soup. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. That's hideous. <laughs> oh, the second one, the second one. I yeah, the second one. Second one. Yeah. Oh, the second. God. That just looks like a nose of a person with dreads. It's Groucho Marx mask with You're red. right. It's very Groucho Marx. The second one is much better. All right. I, you know what? I really think that would be lovely. So Argent. A semi of wooden bows proper. A leak vert. Any alternatives since we have so many options? I mean, I'm really liking the bows and the leaks, or like the slingshot and the leak. You know how before with the butcher it was, I don't remember what it's called, where they were cut in half. Oh, the field division? Yeah, the field division. So you have the uh, slingshot on one and then the leak on the other. So the two charges with the split field. Sure, why not? That way you really are slingshotting the leak. <laughs> um, and as to the question about David Leakies, why not have that one covered in whales? <laughs> Unfortunately, I actually don't know who David Leakey is. I make a promise to look them up later. All right, let's do one more together. Votes for the next. I see Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Because I, I already know. Like, I know nothing about heraldry, but Scarlet is red, so I know there is red. 
So yes, we will absolutely require that something be jewels in this heraldry. So what about the Johansson? Uh, that's definitely a, a patronymic Johan's son, John's son. Oh, yes, I know who that is. I still think you can use Wales. W H Wales. I mean, keeping with the uh, saint theme, isn't there a Saint John that has a symbol? What What about his head, John the Baptist? Ooh, that's sexy. Yeah, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> So we've got John the Baptist. What else? Any other Johns? John the Evangelist. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And uh, whichever St. John it was who wrote the Apocalypse. Could you technically put a toilet? <laughs> I think that connotation came much later. All right. However, I don't see why not, but yeah, yeah, we could do a, a chamber pot. That is a heraldic charge. I am thrilled with how you guys know your bibbles and saints. <laughs> All right, so, so far we've got chamber pots, John the Baptist's head, and the color red. All of this is not making for a great time for Scarlet's coat of arms. Let's see. So let's see, what are symbols of St. John's? Yeah, I see some eagles. Um, yeah, eagles. Uh, oh, and St. John the Baptist has the, the lamb with the flag. Lamb. Couldn't think of that one. Yes. All right. So, eagles, lamb. Locust and honey. Oh, that's right. Um, so yes, locusts and honey, which also implies bees. All right, now we've got a big old a vegetable lamb. Like, oh, that's right. There's the tree, the vegetable lamb. Oh my God. Oh, well, we have to use a vegetable lamb. What are those called? Is, is it called just a vegetable lamb? Yeah. Okay. So, yes, uh, a fructed vegetable lamb. There we go. For those who aren't familiar, this is the wackest medieval monster that exists. It's, it's, it's a plant. What grows lambs? I've been trying to talk my local group into using it for years for a populist badge. Oh is my it, god. Is it based off of like milkweed? Or something I, like that? That sounds entirely reasonable, but I do not have that knowledge. Oh, the legend may have originated with European misunderstanding of cotton, which produces bowls containing fluffy fibers that could be mistaken for lamb's wool. Well, it'd help if I read, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we got to do a vegetable lamb. We could also do a bunch of beheaded heads. Oh, that's grisly, though. All right. Got any votes? Anybody want to throw something in? Whoa, don't, 
don't see this. Don't look at that. <laughs> look at what? I didn't see anything. Perfect. I was trying to bring up the, the chats. And unfortunately, Control H and Alt H look a lot alike. Mm hmm. All right. So it's Scarlett Johansson. Um, we know that the Johansson were definitely using the vegetable lamb, and no one can fight me out of that. So the Scarlet, it could just be that the vegetable lamb is Jules. Or the field. All right. So if the vegetable lamb is Jules, uh, what color or what metal, rather, shall our field be? Argent? That's All metal, right. right? Yep. Your metals are argent and ore. It could also be a fur. Furry enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> All right, so argent, <laughs> a vegetable lamb jewels. So that technically has everything you need, but you could add in any of the other charges as a secondary charge. Do we have any favorites? Head. Heads. Heads. Yeah. Head. Love it. Oh. Nope. Nope. Oh no. Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure how to do just a man's head. I know it can be done. I just don't know. Man's head, apparently. Just man's head. Cool. That's the ugliest beard ever. What's that? I so said that's the ugliest beard ever. I kind of looks, I hesitate to say, but a wee bit testicle-y. I was thinking that too. Oh, here we go. Man's head and bust hooded and caped. That, that's... Oh no. Oh no. We're going to go back up to just man's head. <laughs> Actually, the savage's head looked pretty good. Well, I'm going to avoid anything labeled savages. As you will. <laughs> I, I agree with that. So three men's, or I'm ra randomly selecting three. It's, it probably needs to be more than one. Any any disagreement? I think three is fine. Three man's heads. Cabost. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think that sounds nice. It's nice and grisly. I regret that we did not get to use the chamber pot. But it's worth it, I think, for the vegetable lamb. Vegetable lambs are cool. <laughs> we need so, more. Uh, regarding a tincture for the heads. Um, oh, might be blazing this friar's head. All right. Uh, so the heads are currently on a silver background. So they will need to be a tincture. I do not know if they have a proper coloration. I assume they do, but I don't actually know off the top of my head. It said there, proper coloration. All 
Oh, okay. All right. Is a human and don't specify um, ethnicity well, going to be pink or argent and it counts as argent for conflict. So we have to do Okay, so we'll else. have to either turn them into, um, so I guess they'll be pink skinned, I suppose, or brown. So pink, pink will be conflict, will be, excuse me, tincture as, as if it were argent, so it's, it will be treated as argent on argent. I remember running into um, rulings on that, people saying, no, you can't do that. So let's pick a color for our head. They could be jewels as well. It's a bloody business, all this beheading. Yep. Jewels, jewels. Yes, yes. Oh. Good job, Scarlet. You have some of the most badass arms we've made today. All right. So, as I believe you were shown a moment ago, it is now time for your own work. And I'm going to do one too. So, please pick from this list not including the ones we've already done. And on your own, attempt to select, at the very least, some symbols from heraldicart.org that you might use for some of these people. You can do exactly one. You can do more than one. This is kind of a free-for-all for fun times. Um, and if you can, try and think of some next level puns, like Millie or the leak business we discussed. Oh, and I've put on this page here, on this, on this slide, a particular field division that is called Barry, that might be useful for some of the people on this page, that might be entertaining. So how about we do about five minutes, and in that time, I shall read a poem. You can ignore me though. When that April, with his sure suit and the draught of March, hath pierced to the root, and bathed every vein in which three liquor, of which virtue engendered is the poor, when Zephyrus, eke with his sweet breath, inspired hath in every halt and heat the tender crops, and the young son hath in the ram his half corsi rub, and small fowls making melody. That sleepin' all night with open ye, so pricketh in nature in ye courages that longin' folk to boon on pilgrimages, and palmers for the second to strange strands 
to fair and hulls, caught in sundry lords. <laughs> and specially from every shire's end of England to Canterbury they wind, a holy blissful martyr for to seek, that him hath holpen one they were sick. Biffle that in the sussing on a day, in a southwark at a tabard as I lay, ready to wend in on my pilgrimage to Canterbury with full devout carriage. At night was come into that hostelry, well nine and twenty in a company of sundry folk by adventure if foul, in fellowship and pilgrims they were all, that toward Canterbury wooden ride, their chambers and the stables were in wide, and well we were in as an at best. All right, it has been approximately five minutes since we started. Okay, so let's see. Who would like to go first? So I got interrupted, so I have nothing. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, think on it while others are talking. I got one. All right. You first, then. So I chose Bradley Cooper. Um, and forgive me, I do not know the proper names for tinctures and uh, That's fine. metals. So we're going to go with a green field. So that would be vert. Vert. Um, no, it can't be vert because I was going to do a blue hawk and then in A chief, blue hawk, did you say? With a bird. Oh, as in Cooper's hawk. Yeah, which means the field can't be green because that would. Okay, so a hawk mm -hmm. azure. And then anything else? Um, flowers in chief. Flowers in chief. Mm -hmm. Is there a a reason for the flowers? Yes, because with the etymology of Bradley, it mean could mean broad clearing, like a meadow. Oh, I love that. All right. So, um, so you can have a chief that's vert. And you can have a metal flower, or is like yellow. What you think? That works great. Okay, which means now you just need a metal behind your hawk. And since you already have gold, you probably want gold. Makes sense. So, or a hawk azure, or yeah. Flowers or in chief, or ha however many flowers. We'll go with three just to make our lives easy. Three flowers or in chief vert. Awesome. Did anyone else have Bradley Cooper? No. Okay. So I'll, I'll mention what I had in mind. Uh, Cooper is a name for a barrel maker, and a barrel is a charge that you can use, and brads are nails, well, are a stabby thing with a flat part. So I was thinking of using nails and barrels to have Bradley Cooper. So, all right, got any volunteers? Well, I already put mine up on the chat. Oh, awesome. John Barrowman. Oh, let me <laughs> let me scroll up a bit. I'm sorry that I missed you, Magdalena Ramberti. Farewell. All right. Argent, a wooden wheelbarrow proper for John Barrowman. I like it. 
And yes, I, I put him specifically on there for the barrow bit. I was trying Very to think clever. Of, oh, of farewell, barrow, I was trying to think of how to do barrow as a, as a burial mound. Oh, a, that would be very yeah. cool. Well, mound. I couldn't figure out how to, so I said, eh. You can, you can use some vertical shapes to imply mountains. Not vertical shapes, just general shapes like triangles to do mountains. Um, and then you, a mountain is a mound. So. Can you have a rounded chevron? Uh, yes, but there's a different name for it. If you look under the heraldic art stuff, I recommend hitting up uh, shapes and symbols. In arched, yeah, I think that I know that in arched refers to that kind of uh, convex curvature. That could be your mound, your burial mound. Um, you just go, quickly Rachel? looking through to see if there's a. Um, chevron is like this. So if you enarch it, it's like this. And what you want, there actually is a shape, shape called a mound, which is uh, the under the ordinaries. Oh, wait, there's a mount. Okay, How mount. about that? Just, just a mount that I don't. I want something to look more bar like a barrel, like a burial mound. And that's just not, I don't see that come through. So I went for a real barrel. I think that's real clever though. All right, any more John Barrowmans? One, two, three. All right, awesome. So who's next? Who wants to hit next? Sure. Uh, so I'm not sure how to put it or anything, but I chose Britney Spears, and I thought Still? of Spears and uh, Britain, Britannia, bears. I know it's a stretch, but all I can think of was bears and Spears. Bears. Why bears? Vaguely like Britney. Yeah. Bear. A play on the word Britain. You could do ten bears. All of the bears. Because <laughs> then it would be Br'er Ten. <laughs> Bear Tenny. Okay. I, I think that's actually pretty clever. So, how about ten bears and a spear in chief? I dig we it. We don't blazon that many. What's that? I said we usually don't blazon anything more than about six. And then so it would just be a bunch of bears. All right. So does anybody have any last remarks before I lose my last minute? This was really great, thank you. I hope it was fun. Oh, oh yes, Ringo Starr, yes. Yes, I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking for Ringo. That was so good, so good. Could you put the star inside of a circle for a ring go star? Yes, exactly. Um, and uh, Anya has already placed uh, annuity or a star. Uh, or, I think uh, yes, perfection. Also, Ringo does mean oh, apple in Japanese. So you could also use apples. Just oh, found I'm sorry. Anya's answer. For DeForest Kelly, green field with silver bones and blasted trees. I love it. Were you thinking Kelly Green and the deforestation? 
and the silver bones, of course. Yeah, White bones, because he's bones. Yes. Yep. Look at the bones. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you for indulging my dorkitude.